What's up everyone? Back here with River City Girls. It's Leon and Ada. She's drinking apple juice now because she thirsty. <laughs> I'm thirsty too, but I have nothing to drink. We are now exiting the third boss area and looks like getting our asses kicked. Oh, where to now? Yeah, we're gonna start seeing some of the enemies that. It's really hard for me to jump from here. Really hard. Yeah, you guys want to know a secret? <laughs> Tell them the secret. Leon helped me. How did I help you? You jump first, then you use my controller jump secondly. Because I couldn't do it. You, you mean I? You mean I did it for you? Yes. That's true. She didn't have to admit that, but she's a mensch, so. I couldn't jump. I don't like jump games. Then, <laughs> you don't like platformers. Mm, like uh, Super Mario. I'm really bad at it. I thought I was good, but yeah, but you said you were good at Circus Charlie. Maybe I will buy for me first, then I can play. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. I saw you play Mario, though. You're not good at it. Oh. Do you know uh, what's uh, what's uh, what's my favorite game? And I'm really good at it. Do you know? Snow Brothers. And uh, yes, but I, I'm good at it. But you never see me play it. What game you see me play? And I'm really good at the fighting game. Oh. Whatever that fighting game was that we that I got from the Neo Geo, an arcade classic or something. Because. It has two qualities. One, you press button randomly. A button mashing. Yeah, yes. Button mashing. Second, you don't have to jump. You don't have to gaze through anything. All you can do is press your button. <clears throat> well, I I think the problem that you had with the jumps is in this game. It's not so much jumping. It's the running jump. Yes, I couldn't press two buttons yeah, together. Yeah. Welcome. Hope you're hungry. I don't know what's wrong with the video, um, but it looks from here like the frame rate is just completely went to shit during this part. It may just be the rendering process, like how it's playing in my uh, my editing software. But if it is indeed like a bad frame rate, I have to apologize. I don't know why it would do that. But you see hmm. how it looks like a little choppy. Mm. It starts to make it look like a slideshow if it gets bad enough. Mm. That that's the that's the frame rate. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I know what you mean. Here I made mistakes twice, right? Here? No. I accidentally took bus twice. You remember? Oh, you did. You did that on this playthrough. Yes. You accidentally took the bus yes, twice. Yes. Yes. See, and, and that... uh, you blame me. You said it's gonna make it so bad. Yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I didn't blame you. I thought it was funny. Mm, maybe. Yeah, maybe. It. Look, regardless of what happened during the recording, it's illustrative of the issues with this game. Like that area that you just saw with that. Uh, with the bus, bus stop, station. Oh. yeah, the bus station right near the bottom of the screen. You're gonna have to walk down there and fight people. And yes, and if you press the circle, no circle, uh, square. square, and uh, you accidentally take the bus. I think it's this place, right? If I remember right. Yeah. I just want to tell you guys, I'm I didn't do it on purpose, and uh, I really feel embarrassed. You shouldn't feel embarrassed. No, don't feel embarrassed. I mean, it's make it's not me, like you're you're. Make me look so unprofessional. You you're not professional. That's the point. I mean, look, you were just having fun and like trying to keep up with me and my stupid like quest for trophies. And you know, you were you were just really good about it. You. What, what can anyone expect? This is not what you do. Mm, say I pick a cop. How, how many video games have you played in the last year? No. You are the you are the one who make me play video games because exactly. they don't have 
video game machine. Exactly. So I mean, you have nothing. We but I never get into it. You have nothing to be embarrassed about, and you held your own. Uh, to to interrupt for a second, these enemies are fucking hilarious. Don't you think so? Ah,、uh, Chris. Arnold. They make.、Uh, I call them Arnolds. Oh, it's so funny. You give us a nickname. I can't make the Arnold sound. I can't do it. But they're pretty. They're pretty lethal. And if they punch you, or they. They look so silly. And they sound、like、so silly. Oh, I call them paper tiger because they look like tiger, but actually it's paper tiger. It's easy to beat them. You think they're easy to beat? Oh.、Uh, well, that makes one of us.、Uh, to me, they, they they have so much health, and when they hit you, it really hurts. But these. They're 好像嘛，呃 ，machine machine stuff, like, right? Yeah, these they're like cyborgs. I guess they're supposed to be like Terminators, you know,、oh. from the movie The Terminator.、Uh, but these these like lower level ones aren't so bad. Look at me, so brave. But the zombie ones and uh, and uh, the black one, they're a little bit more aggressive, and they shoot bombs at you.、Um, they're they're sort of the equivalent of the stink bombs from the cops, and when they blow you up. You feel it. You feel it in your gut. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah. But we're coming up, I think, to the tunnel, which is here, and this is where I couldn't view again. <laughs> yeah, God. For, for those who didn't. God. Yeah, for those who didn't watch the last video, she、so、she often has、town. trouble、like、leaving leaving areas.、So、But now we're we're gonna、so、encounter our first、right uh, hammer guy,、mm. I think. And they they are the most deadly enemies in the game. The hammer dudes. You need to be very careful because they took you so much power by one hit.、Mm. And they're very hard to dodge when they start swinging because、yeah. they track you. I think you barely can you barely can dodge because this motherfucker. Oh, it's a pink guy. It's bullshit because they track you. And that means like across the axis of the screen, like they'll be swinging, and you'll jump to dodge, like jump away to a different part of the axis on the screen, and you see his his swing, it'll just track you like right where you're landing, so it becomes really hard to dodge, and just profoundly aggravating. Yeah,、yes. it, ma it makes me want to beat up some cops. <laughs> <laughs> A pick a whip. It's a it's a chain whip, yeah. Surprisingly, pussy ass weapon, but I still like my yo yo. Yo yo is better. Fish is my second one. You will say in the fish market. Yeah, the the fish is probably the second best weapon、mm. outside of the yo yo.、Mm. And it, it really helps deal with those cat enemies who are what is this? Nothing. That these are accessories, and like accessories are useless, all of them. Yeah. Except for two, the ones that the cost five thousand dollars. Yeah, and the books, the books. Yeah.、Um, but the the five thousand dollar ones, the tank pin, and、um, the speed one. I, I can't remember. It's like a rabbit, I think. You put those on together, and you become it's God mode. It's awesome. It's really fun. But it's、play. a hidden accessory. Yeah,、right? and I. I either wasn't paying attention, or we haven't got there yet. But when you go through this tunnel,、mm. you、uh, there's a hidden door. I I swear to God, we've been there already. But、um, yeah, I I'm, remember I'm their scenario. Really、tunnel. senile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's in the tunnel. I grinded for like six hours, five or six hours to yeah, get that、I、money. Yeah, I remember. But here's the thing. I I can't confirm this, but I. I noticed that when making this video, we I went and did the second ending, maybe the true ending where you fight Hasabe and and Mommy, Mommy is that her name? Mommy, yes.、Uh, Mommy and Hasabe, and、uh, I didn't want to do that fight just normally with how we are now, so I just did it on my other file. We did it with the tank pin,、mm. so we could beat him really fast. 
And we still got the money after we did that. Mm. However, you remember when we tried to do it with Ricky and Kunio? Yes. We did not get any money yeah. when we did it. Why? I don't know. Okay. But I'm thinking that if you want to get $10,000 really quickly, then you can just keep beating after you beat the game the first time. You can just go into roam mode, free roam mode, and then just keep beating Hasabe and Mommy over and over again, and it gives you like $1,000 every time you beat them, and that money accrues to everybody. Anytime you get money or level up after you finish a, a file, it goes to everybody. Everybody levels up. Everybody gets the money. So you could easily get your $10,000 for each character that way, and then just have everybody be god mode who mm. you want to be god mode mm. um but i'm so, not i'm not sure that's true but i think based on my experience here that would work this is i think where the boss place yeah so i think you're about to see it here or when we come back here i think all this series is built up by your experience but i never know you know my only rule is just follow you yeah, well, that certainly simplifies things. Yeah, because I don't, I don't. You told me by what I buy. Yeah, that's where I made mistakes. But you, and the crazy thing is, she did not do that on purpose. That is just the fault of the developers making the button prompts retarded. Like the same button picking up enemies, picking up items, doing a light attack, and using the bus stop. You wind up doing absurd things like taking the bus in the middle of a fight. So sometimes, if you want to fight with other people, you just uh, be far away from the door, be far away from the bus stop station because it's really like uh, annoying. It's another variable you have to consider, but it also puts you in very vulnerable positions mm. because you wind up getting sandwiched. You have to stick yourself in like the middle of the map. I mean, look at this. You have an exit to your right, an exit to your left, an exit to your north, a bus stop in your south, and a store. Right Who there. I'm talking what? to? Why he, he's over on the other side of the screen. Oh, okay. And he apparently worships Ricky and Kunio. What do you think of him? Hobo. Hobo. Mm. High school hobo. Oh. Okay, kid. Well, keep it up. I'm sure you'll punch yeah. someone back eventually. I won't stop until I do. Because he doesn't have one, one, he lost Probably. one tooth. Looks really bad. So what do you think about this? I mean, about having played this game multiple times, would you play it again? Do you think it has replay value? Yes, of course. You would play it again, like just mm, to relax. Espe yes, especially after we played everything, I can be uh, I can be easy up a little. You know, I won't be nervous exactly. all Exactly. Mm. See, now you're thinking like a completionist. That's exactly how completionists think, or mm. most completionists anyway. You don't really relax when you're playing the game until you, you get your 100% or your platinum. At least that's the way I am. I don't really know if I truly enjoy a game until really like after I complete it. Then I can purely enjoy the story, enjoy the fight, yeah. enjoy the music. Yeah. yeah. I'm not worried about dying anymore. Even if I die, so what, you know? Yeah, it doesn't matter if you yeah. lose your money. Um, doesn't make any difference. This first aid medicine is probably the best healing item you're gonna get access to until you get to the beach. I think it's 50%, right? I think it's 50%. Oh. When you get to the beach, you can get a better one, but while you're here quiche. no it's not the, it's not the quiche um stock up on first aid quiche is good i think that's like 40 percent but it, it's down where in the fish market if you remember at the italian restaurant mm. it gives you like 70 percent it's awesome ending program but downtown is really brutal uh, is that where we are? I think we're. I think we're in downtown now. It's either downtown or uptown. So fish market is uh. Yeah, downtown. Fish market is in Ocean Heights or whatever. 
We're gonna meet that this. girl who holds the. Oh, we're gonna get the ticket. Yeah. For the concert for the fifth or fourth fourth boss. That's in Ocean Heights. Here we just have to do、uh, a side quest where we have to destroy five cars because Godai doesn't like rich people or something. Because <laughs> he lives in a in a dumpster. He lives in a van down by the river. Hobo. <laughs>、uh, hobo, yeah. You live in a van down by the river. So. Yeah, and then and then you have to fight a Bobo, who is the the stone throwing boss. Kind of sucks. Oh, but we get to fight zombies. Zombie area. You have to get the key for the guy, so you have to go to the zombie place. But they're your favorite enemies. This is where you get the book. No.、Oh. You see, and we're about to do that here. There's four books I think you can get in there, and they're all fairly expensive as these things go. But you you just need one, the toy book,、mm. and do not use it. Get it in your inventory and pick up a yo-yo, and yo-yo never gonna be broken. You will be invincible, basically, with an unbreakable yo-yo. You know, it, it'll go away when you fight the bosses, but then you could just go back and get it.、Welcome、so it's the、um, which book is it? Toy. Joy, the joy of toys. And you gotta remember, if you use it when you buy it, it's all over. It doesn't matter if you buy it and don't use it after that; it will not work. And when we first time play, we have no idea about、yeah. this book. What you know, like、uh, what's the value about these books? No idea. no idea. I I had to read it on on Game Facts. We saw that books、uh, exist、uh, just for the trophy stuff. Yeah, you know, buy everything. Yeah, it, but it, it it didn't make any sense because the descriptions of the books were like that these weapons will never break, these weapons will never break, and it just didn't fucking work. Yeah, because we don't know. We use all of them. We didn't save them. But even even after I used it,、uh, it's still. Didn't work when I when I bought it and kept it in my inventory because, because yes,、already. if you use it once, it, it basically just like voids. It basically just voids the efficaciousness of the of the books.、Mm. So it's bullshit. This area right here is one of the hardest、um, arena fights that you have. I don't.、Uh, we always had massive trouble with this part. I don't like jump all the time. You know, it's not like open area.、Mm. You you always block there, and hammer guys. Oh, oh, everything. Could be not lock here, right? See, we will be. Okay. Maybe not now, but I think I assumed we were locked, and then I realized we weren't. Sometimes I'm thinking, like, if you beat the hammer, when he doesn't drop his hammer, I can pick his hammer. Yeah, that would be a beastly weapon. Oh, hammer! Don't be scared of this uh, uh, tiger guy, because all they can do is rolling as a ball. <laughs> That's all. They just jump. They don't have other specialty. They don't need. They look strong, but they are weakest. It's true. They are one. They are one of the weakest enemies in the game. They are the ones I fear the least, probably.、Mm. Like cheerleaders are hard. Schoolgirls are always hard. Always have that kick. Yeah. Cops suck. Hammer guys suck. Whip girls suck. The cat girls are awful. You will see later. Yeah, you gotta kill them as quickly as possible. But I don't know. How do you feel that this game compares to the other brawler you played, Streets of Rage? Like, did you? Streets of Rage is good, but I like this game more. Okay, why? Why? Why do you like? Colorful.、This? You and you're gonna、Music. realize that that's like heresy, because Streets of Rage is like a classic. You know, when I was a kid,、mm. Streets of Rage was like one of my favorite games.、Mm. Ever, like I played it all the time on the Genesis. I just had... because in that age we don't really have too many games. There were a lot of games, but maybe not as many as now.、Oh. Yeah, but 
didn't. But I'm just, I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just telling you that a lot of people are going to go, you're nuts and crazy. But I think it's a valuable perspective. Like, you're, yours is a perspective that is not coming from someone who's been gaming her whole life. You know, you, you just played a couple of games and you're giving your, um, let's say, average Joe's opinion. So you you like this better than Streets of Rage. Yes. And because of just the general I tone. think I think yes and uh, first of all it's colorful mm. second of all I really care about the character you know because I yeah. think she is cute she somehow is like me you know like mm. um, not like me like the person I want to be you know cool personality and also I enjoy the music you know I don't remember the Street of Rage's music. Streets of Rage has one of the most famous so video game soundtracks ever made you, by okay. Yuzo Kashira. But I mean, yeah, it's different. It's so like an older dude. Um, classic one. Go, it's an older type of video game music aesthetic. But um, yeah, uh, it, it has really good music for a, for a Genesis but game. But this is different. This you is think different. This, uh, this music is more like a love music? Like a love story, some, some, somehow, like a romantic uh, element inside. It's I, a different feel. Oh, very yes, much so. Yes. Very different feel. Like uh, uh, The Streets of Rage music is very... Um, so well, it, Charlie, it, it, it fits a brutal, a brutal game in a brutal setting. The music in this game is not brutal yes. at all. You know Circus Charlie, right? Yeah. You watch, you watch that video. That music is cute too, right? Like, really classic. Definitely, it's mm. nice, perfect chip tune music, mm. something like that. It, I, I love it. Like you said, it's different, mm. it's different feeling. That's a zombie part. But like, okay, how about as far as the gameplay goes? I mean, did you find this? I really enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, even though you were yelling and you got frustrated, you still. I didn't yell. You yelled at me. No, I heard you yell many times. <laughs> I didn't pick that fucking thing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I want you to think I'm angry too. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was when I, I wasn't even angry and you were... I, maybe I made some mistakes. I tried to cover my mistakes to use my emotion. You didn't make any mistakes. It was just when, when the mechanics were screwing you. Here. You know, when you were picking things up and you didn't mean to, you grab onto someone and you didn't mean to. So far, I have two games I really like. This is one of one of them. Another is Resident Evil. You know, I play with you, Resident Evil 5, right? Resident Evil 5. I really like that game too. Even I suck, but I like it. What? Funny, right? Yeah, you couldn't handle Desperate Escape though. But you always protect me in that game, you know. You say, yeah. You stay here, I will go. She kill all the guys, then you can come out. Something like that. I really like that feeling. Protected feeling. Yeah, well, we just we just had the infinite ammo on and just had her just pull out the shotgun and just shoot randomly. Oh, basically. and also you don't want me to use that launcher. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't let her use the rocket launcher because she'd blow herself up all the time or yes. blow me up. There's definitely friendly fire in that game. But that game, I get better. Do you agree? Like Yes, 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 you got better. Mm. But uh, you couldn't handle professional mode. Like no. we, we tried uh, a couple of areas in professional mode and you couldn't handle it, remember? Mm. Uh, not not easy areas and professional mode on Resident Evil 5 is hard. So I think I like game uh, which you can play two people. You like co-op games. Mm -hmm. A lot of people it, don't. It's it, no, no, it's popular these days. Co-op is mandatory for, I think for a for lot of professional people. people. Maybe they like play by themselves. But no, no, me no. I mean, co-op is where people make their bones. Like they go on uh, online co-op and join people's games it's like uh it's a very modern gaming thing well, people like me are the people who don't really like co-op we do like couch co-op which is what we did with this because we grew up with that like playing playing on the couch next to somebody mm. that's fun you mean like, some people just go online yeah 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 go. that's the standard thing now do you Online think they have a problem? Like, uh, for example, in this game, right? 
you are the master. Apparently,、mm. Minro, right? And I'm a just little guy who stand beside you and、uh, protect you. But if you co-op with people online, um,、uh, do you think like、uh, they have this problem? No, I mean it depends on the game. Like in Dark Souls,、mm. which is a game where a lot of people rely on online co-op. Like you can, you can be very low, you know, at a very low level. And or maybe just a noob or something, and some people can come into your game and sort of handhold and help you beat bosses and level up and stuff like that.、Mm. And they do, and they're very helpful. But in other games, they're just dicks. Like, if you ever played the online mode in Resident Evil 5,、mm. which is like versus mode, I think it's called. I gave it a shot because I wanted to hundred percent the game, but it, it's just it's just impossible. Like people are such dicks in that mode. I don't even know what to say. I lasted about three or four rounds, and then、gave, so you gave up. up. Yeah, my brother tried it, and it was just like I couldn't even understand what people were doing. I'd just be like, I'd start off, and then I walk around, and then I got my yo-yo. You got a yo-yo too. Yeah, so we we are doing the the yo-yo cheese right now. This is just a, a demonstration of what the yo-yo cheese is like with the books. And again, like if you're for some stupid reason playing on hard mode, you definitely want to do this. Definitely. Really gonna helpful. But on normal mode, there's no need. But I still want it. Yeah, I just wonder what the fun is. You know, what's the fun if you're just whipping people with the yo-yo? I couldn't leave again. Yeah, having trouble with the exiting strategy. I have no exit strategy. I'm waiting for the. I'm just thinking if this game doesn't give you the time, you know, like you leave, I have to leave by myself too. I'm gonna be a really big problem. I guess. I guess we just have to change our strategy a bit. Like I would have to stand pat, and you would have to exit first, and then I would follow you. That's how we do it. There, see, there's a bomb, Arnold. Is that Masako and Kyoko? Hey, everywhere. This is another thing. Like the 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 cutscenes, they'll just pop up randomly, like right when you're in the middle of a fight. And sometimes I was jumping in the air. Sometimes the guy is almost gonna kick you. You almost always get hit. Yeah, after the conversation over, God. I'll make it worth your while. It's just amazing, like how beautiful this game is, though. I couldn't believe it when I was looking at the previews, and you know, you guys know me. You watch my channel. I play survival horror games. I play dark, dark games. I remember that kind of game. You the one, you know what the game? What's the name of the game? They have Lori, right, Lori? Lori? Hmm. It's really scary when the the girl, his father, her father trying to find her. Oh, I'm sure I know what you're talking about, but my brain is a complete fucking blank right now. Oh, <laughs> go go into more detail. And they have many many, uh, scary scenario like the butcher, right? Oh, the evil within. Oh, I think that game gave me nightmare. It's really scary. You know, it actually has given a lot of people nightmares, and、uh, it doesn't. It doesn't、um, have a reputation for being a scary game, but you know, when I first played it, I was in a in a bad mental place. Really? What? I, you know when it was. I was suffering from. What's the game's name? The Evil Within. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were.、Uh, Yeah, it was. It was a few years ago. It was like 2015 or 2016 or something, and I had developed a pretty severe panic disorder, right?、Mm. Yeah. Was I wrong, you? You? Oh. What do you mean? Like when you play it? No, man. I played it at 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 home. Oh. In in、uh, in the states, but. You know, I wasn't playing video games at the time. I stopped gaming for ten years, 
I, I never really was a gamer. I just played video games when when I was when I was a kid, like all kids my age did. And uh, once I got into college and I started focusing on building up my my knowledge and my skills and going to grad school and all that jazz, I just stopped playing video games completely. Basically, forgot they existed. Um, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox, Xbox 360, uh, the Nintendo Wii, all that stuff flew right by me. Never owned them. Never even played them. Never even knew anyone who had one.、That's, Because you were so into your knowledge. Yeah, I was. I was really into my studies. You are a、studies. nerd. Very much.、Mm. Yeah, I was focused on, you know, becoming what I wanted to be as far as the academic world was concerned, and. Video games are, are looked down on in academia, and I, I probably shared in that attitude a bit, put childish things away, right?、Mm-hmm. But what happened was, you know, I moved out of the country, and I had some pretty bad things happen to people I knew, and I just broke down. I broke down. I, I had a complete mental breakdown. That's no exaggeration. Is it? No. You were there. Yes. Pretty, pretty tough. And it lasted years. Hmm. <laughs> didn't it? Hmm. I mean, if you had to pick a word to describe what it was like. Hell. Hell. Hmm. I think that's a good word. Yes. That's what it、I'm、was. Pretty much. It was hell. Hmm.、Oh. I have never felt worse in my life. Never. Also, no matter how sick I was. No matter. I was never so person like that. Yeah, neither have I. Honestly, never seen a person like that. Whatever happened, I broke. I just broke internally, and I was so sick, mentally and physically, that I could not even go outside anymore. Really, like I couldn't ride in cars. I couldn't ride in airplanes. I could barely walk down the street without having a fucking panic attack. By the time I finally. Got properly diagnosed and figured out what was wrong with me. I, I was essentially in a 24-hour state of panic, all day panic attacks. The things that I loved, I couldn't watch the movies that I loved, like horror movies, thrillers, etc., because they caused me so much stress that it would lead to me having a panic attack. It was that bad. So, I come home. And my brother just makes a suggestion that, hey man, you should start playing video games. And I said, yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm willing to try anything at this point, anything. May, maybe it'll have some sort of effect on my mind where I can be doing something that I associate with a happier time in my life. You know, like when I was a child, playing video games. And in removing my my focus of attention, the center of my attention from myself and my own internal state, like everybody who has panic disorder knows that one of the worst things about it is worrying about having a panic attack causes you to have a panic attack, right? Yes, I remember in Breaking Bad, the guy, the, the which、DEA. one? The brother in the old white. What the fuck was his name? Um. Oh, I forgot too. Oh my god. But you you know、That's、what I'm. That's criminal. Ta- yeah, yeah. The,、oh. the 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 brother-in-law. Oh,、uh, what is name? Yeah. Now trying to remember his name. Anyway, he has a panic attack in the elevator. You remember? Yeah,、that? yeah, yeah. He was suffering. And he was so scared. He gonna harm it again. It's like what you said. That's right. Have a panic attack. The most scary thing is you scared it's gonna happen again, right? Thinking about it. Yep. You you can't even describe it. Like you're either in a state of panic or you're worrying about it and then causing a state of panic. Yes. I don't、and、know then, what that is, but I read some novels. They always say like they have this dizziness. Mm mm mm. You know. Can't, the- you can't. Your throat closes up. You feel extremely nauseous. I was so nauseous all the time, like. 24 hours a day that I couldn't eat anymore.、Mm. I lost like 20 pounds. Maybe I don't have that feeling. But when I read the novel,、uh, re- written by Kundera, you know. Which one? 
I don't know the, the unbearable likeness of uh, being really that's a that's an English name I, I don't know English name yeah anyway and he described a scenario the guys the uh, the woman you know the, which one the main character uh -huh. I don't remember his her name in English I don't know I don't either I don't remember their Ther names Te Te Lei Sha in okay. Chinese Teresa Teresa yeah and she has uh, very ho horrible dreams, nightmares, mm. and has this scenario like uh, all the women who naked and work like a uh, go circle around a uh, swimming pool, uh -huh. you know, and she has this huge dizziness and almost faint in her wow. own dream, you know, and uh, this, you know, this naked body, right? Yeah. Like it's like the the how to say. Think about the sunshine, like reflect in the mirror on the mirror. That's stuff like a, the how to say that it's um, like shining. Because naked body is barely like the, it's it's basically like the white stuff. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, they can have it, its own shining glory, something like that. Sure. You know, but it's in a disgust way. Okay. It's nasty way. I make people really dizzy, and I remember them very deeply. Hmm. Cause me nauseous too uh, when I read that part. Yeah, it's crazy. Like every, I don't know how even, to... even if I had to talk to a new person, mm. I used to get excited about meeting to new people, or like talking to a, a, a new young, you know, a new uh, face at school or something, a new student. I, I would just, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'd get sick. I get sick. Everything made me sick. Like so, you have to carry your shell all the time. You know what I mean? Like you want uh, crawling in your shell. Mm. So anyway, like to return to the story, my brother suggested I. I he's like, dude, we should be gamers, bro. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, dude, we should be gamers. And it, you know he was he was half joking, but he was also half serious. He just wanted to try to help you. Yeah, he had been he had been following news in the gaming world for a while, just based on the stuff that he read on the internet. Whereas I sort of glossed over all that stuff, like when GamerGate was going on and all of that. I didn't pay any attention to that. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. I didn't. I was. Till that time, you don't even watch YouTube. Nah, I, I watched YouTube for lectures. I was oh, watching okay. like lectures on the Peloponnesian War from Donald Kagan, and you know, philosophy courses at Yale and stuff. You know, like that. That was my YouTube content. Uh, and occasionally, I would look for music videos from my childhood that I remembered, songs that I wanted to download that I couldn't find anywhere else. But video games, no. Never. I missed that whole thing when it started. When you start to watch video videos on YouTube and game videos. After I started gaming. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when I was looking for walkthroughs. So, my brother said, "Let's do it," and I was like, "Fine. Okay. I, I give up. I don't care if I have to become a child again and play video games because this state that I'm in. By the way, this boss is awful." Not as bad as the last boss, but Bobo. A Bobo, yeah. He um, has such a cute name, a Bobo. Yeah, it's like our our little stuffed animal, Humbaba. Humbaba, by the way, it's a Sumerian. The Sumerian demon. This this woman right here, Ada, <laughs> is a. I'm not sure the proper way to describe it, but she's. A, a, a kind of a seriologist, believe it or not. Really young to it. Uh, you listen to her talk and you think she's like a little, little cute Chinese girl, but because of my English, it's not too good. Yeah, in China, she in Chinese she sounds a lot more stern and and um, uh, overbearing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she's uh, she's actually. Um, Wow. Spent a year in in Israel, right? Mm. Uh, at uh, at the at an institute there and at the Hebrew University, learning Sumerian and Akkadian in cuneiform. Yeah, smart girl. So anyway, um, got a couple of fists too. Humbaba, yeah. What was I saying? The uh, video games. We, we bought um. 
the cheapest system we could find. We bought an Xbox 360. I didn't know anything, but Xbox 360 sounded fine. And then just bought the Resident Evil games I had missed. I bought Resident Evil 5, 6, 4, um, 2, 3, Silent Hill, 2, standard stuff. But I, I also picked up The Evil Within because it looked like a pretty cool horror game. Mm. And it just so happened that the first game I played was The Evil Within. Oh, that's the first game. Yeah, it okay. was the first. It, it looked great, so I was like, I don't want to just How play. How many it has? Two. Two. Um, and so I still, my point is I still wasn't in a good place when I started playing The Evil Within. I was still pretty broken. Hmm. And that opening sequence when he's in the in the beacon mental hospital and the blood is everywhere and the bodies are yeah, everywhere you, really should choose and, some yeah, you get the you get the sadist right and yeah. it's it, it's and also the story is about someone lose someone right yeah it made me feel sick yeah I just but don't know at the why same time game well because it looked interesting but I made it to the second chapter and then I noticed something happen. Mm. Like, the game was so fucking hard that I was getting really frustrated and really angry. But I wasn't panicking. That's I, a good I, sign. I wasn't having panic attacks. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just thinking about how much I hated the game and how angry it was making me. Mm. And I, I did that for five hours, like trying to beat chapter two. Remember, it was my first modern game. I sucked. I, I was still learning how to use all those buttons. It was very confusing to me. But, um... Yeah, I went out with my brother afterwards, and yeah, it just dawned on me. Like, this works. This gaming stuff, it works for me. I'm not saying it does that for everybody, but for me... Games are not just fun. They're not just platinums. They're not just works of art. They're not just... Um, as long as it fits you, it's best. It does more than fit me. It fixes me. Mm. You, you notice that, you know, I, I get pretty angry when I play games. Yes. You know, oftentimes pretty angry. So you told me and it's kind of some uh, distraction. Exactly. See, this is the funny thing. Like, tell them, when, when I was at my worst like trying to do the most difficult things i've done like with outlast 2 and the evil within 2 on classic mode how did it make you feel when you saw how angry and upset i was oh my god i don't really want to record but that time it's yeah. really tough for me too because uh, i realized maybe you know you're really in a really bad position yeah and i want to share with you and uh, i care about you i worry about you and make me sick too mm. you know? and after that I start to realize you, you're just angry in that period. Yep. Yep. It's not linger for a long time. Yep. So. And it's not deep. Yeah. So every time you scream, I just okay. So you know it works like this. We, life, at some point causes us this incredible trauma. I discussed this in my last video on on the horror game Lithium in May 39. So you want to hear more about that? You can watch that video. But basically. Yeah, you know, in case you aren't aware, in case you're not a human being and you're not aware, like, you're gonna get fucked up at some point. Really, really fucked up. Of course. Life is gonna hit you. You're hard to find a way to distract yourself. And what happens when your world shatters, right? You have to find a way to pick up the pieces and have a whole world Transport. again. Transport. Um, you start to realize things about life that are... You, you wish were not true. And part of the, maybe all of the challenge, really at the fundamental level of life, is finding a way to deal with those things that we realize, that we come to realize. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to pass judgment on what's true and what's good and what's bad and what's not, but we all have our ways. Some people turn like to drugs and alcohol. Freud to say them. Freud? Oh. Well, like, like I mean, same about theory, repression. Like, oh, yeah, you have to have a way to distract yourself or transfer this stuff. You know, like. Yeah, and then there was like the other, the, you know, Freud is one thing, but I always preferred like Ernest Becker's theories. Mm. 
Ernest Becker was the guy who, uh, I can't remember the name of the theory uh, because I haven't studied this stuff in a while, but he wrote a book called The Flight from Death or something like that. Excellent. And it created, it spawned this whole school of psychology, which is based around the idea that everything that we do at, at the cultural level and pretty much at the individual level as well is a way of dealing with the fact of death finding ways to escape our own awareness our unique species awareness of our mortality right yeah so there's religion there's philosophy there's literature and art there's music there's sex there's drugs there's alcohol there's rock and roll you know all that stuff and there's video games now right and that and People take this word escapism and they throw it around like it's a pejorative. Oh, it's just a form of escapism. It's just a form of escape. Like you're some fucking coward for escaping. And my response to that is always this. Escape is not an unambiguous word. It matters what you are escaping from, doesn't it? If you're escaping from, say, responsibilities that you have, that's coward. That's bad. But if you're escaping from a tyranny, if you're escaping from torture, if you're escaping from imprisonment, unjustified imprisonment, that's courage. Yes. So I think it, it takes courage to escape so from that. So I think that. we should call it balance. Balance yeah, yes. for life. That that's right. Ultimately, the answer to every question is balance. Mm. Okay. <laughs>、uh, what should you do? Find balance. Uh, how do you drink responsibly? So that's why I hate、oh. people always ask, "What's the meaning for this? Why you waste your time? You doing this? Yeah. You know, and what do you really got from it?、Mm. I hate these questions. I may want to answer them. Like I got nothing. I yeah. Got my happiness from yeah, it. So yeah. what? Exactly. You know, like you you raise a very interesting point. The 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 day and age that we live in.、Mm. And and it's not everybody. It's just particularly loud voices on social media and other places. Like I don't see this kind of shit that much in China.、Um, there's a lot of problems here that are different from the problems we have over in the West. But one problem you don't have is people getting mostly like socially sanctimonious over things like that. Like here, it's kosher. Like if you just want to get married and raise a family and tend to your own garden, that's what you're supposed to do. And everybody is fine with that, but it's like、uh, the the way that we've come to think, or at least the very loud people in our culture have come to think in the West is that like if you're not fucking trying to cure cancer, or、um, wear pink shoes, or do anything some some form of activism, then you're essentially wasting your time doing nothing, right? As if sometimes the- I really want to know what something means, like if. We are doing nothing.、So. Well, that's the thing. Like, you always want to say, like, okay, you're not curing cancer, and it's like, why? Why do we want to cure cancer? Why do we want to be healthy? Why do we want to live? What for? I mean, these basic questions that we we take for granted just due to our natural biological proclivity for life. Like life is good; it's a natural biological assumption of our bodies. The organism wants to continue, so we're biased in that direction. But we're the only real species that has to like justify life, because if we lose that justification, if we genuinely feel that that justification is lost, we definitely do commit suicide and are fully capable of it, or just wasting away, wasting away, and letting ourselves waste away. Now. The point is that let's put it like this: There was a movie we watched it. If you remember, it was from the 30s. I think it, it might even been the 20s, but I think it was the 30s. So the guy being a director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preston Sturges.、Oh. It's called Sullivan's Travels. And he couldn't make any good movies, so he went to some place to try to find That's the、right. inspiration. That's right. That this director Sullivan. This is the story.、Mm. He he directs these stupid comedies. Fairly Brothers type stuff, and he starts to feel in that in that hyper、no、that hyperactive period of the 30s, which was kind of like a period like the one we have now, where、uh, this sort of activist mentality was was taking over the public temperature and raising it to a fever pitch. 
he starts to feel that uh, guilty about making insignificant movies, mm. right? Mm. He's wasting his life making this dumb shit. Yes. And so he decides that he's going to search the meaning of a good movie is. Well, no, he he. If you remember, he 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 plans this thing to make a documentary. Where he's gonna have this crew follow him around,、uh, yes. and he's gonna live like poor people.、Mm. Remember.、Mm. Like he's gonna, it's supposed to be like the first reality TV show. Yes. <laughs> he's gonna not take his clothes or his money or whatever, and he's just gonna live like the other half lives, as we say.、Mm. And he winds up just getting totally screwed, loses all of his money, gets mugged, and then he winds up getting framed for a murder or something. Remember?、Mm. And and he goes to jail, and everybody thinks he's fucking dead. Because remember, there was this body, and his ID was on it. It was a hobo, and he like mugged him and took his ID. And they didn't really have forensics back then, so they thought it was him. Yes. So everybody thought he was dead, and he was in jail for murder. Um. Now, when he's in jail, he um. They go to this movie.、And、him and the fellow prisoners, and they're watching some stupid cartoon, some Disney stuff, and. Everybody is just laughing, just laughing their hearts out. And he looks around at them, and it just, it just dawns on him: this is not nothing. And he has this line, I can't remember what it is, but he comes back. He finally gets out of prison, and they're, they're like, "Okay, what movie are you gonna do now?" And he's like, "I'm just gonna do what I do. I'm just gonna make comedies because for some people, all they have in the world." And all they ever will have is laughter, right?、Mm. It's not nothing. Oh, it is not nothing. <laughs> it is definitely not nothing. So, if you're finding some way to alleviate your condition, whatever your condition is, but the condition that relates to our mortality about your world being shattered, you have no call to feel guilty about that. Uh, it's one of the reason why when people get older, when we get older, like let me ask you this, Ada,、mm. Miss Ada, as you get older, do you not that you're old, but as you get older, <laughs> I know it's not cool to call a, a woman old, and she's not old. I'm old, but she's not.、Um, as you as you get older, though, as you proceed more into adulthood, do you find yourself becoming less judgmental? Yes. Than you were as a as a teenager, for example, or in your in your、tolerant、early twenties. Tolerant, small. Yeah, more tolerant, right?、Mm. Um, and I don't mean like stupid, saccharin,、uh, schmaltzy tolerance. Real、no. tolerance. Because like, I realize you, one you thing. You you look at people who you don't like and you never could be friends with, doing things that you consider self destructive, and you say, you know what? Not gonna judge him. I understand that. Yes, and and you understand it in a deep way because you can see yourself doing it too. And、That's、also, I realize one thing. Yeah. Nobody is easy. Live it, on no, this exactly, planet. No, exactly, exactly. Yes. So it's born from that realization. Like we all are born from the same place, in the same shit, live in the same shit, die in the same shit. Right.、Mm, hardships. Hardships. I bought it on hardships. You know, like.、Uh, And、uh, how you can have the qualify qualification to judge them? What's your qualification to judge them? Exactly, right? Who am I? Yes.、Um, now, th- again, it, it, you walk a fine line here. You, you, we, we can't be completely without judgment. You, you might wind up in a condition like, who was it, Chesterton or someone said, you, your, your brain, your mind is so open that your brains fall out.、Mm. But.、Um, It, you you can judge people and still be tolerant of them, you know. Like I can judge that someone's being self-destructive and making poor decisions, but I can also say I fully understand why they're doing it. And uh, uh, if I was in their position, I might even do the same. It doesn't necessarily have to be harsh. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to be a dick when you're judging people. And like that's a kind of、um, mellow, moderate toleration that's sturdy and robust. Yes. The kind of toleration that that comes with just this is why old people have always been 
you know, the ones who were just selected to be in the Senate in like old republics, in Sparta, in Rome, in Athens, and elsewhere. In, in Sparta, they were called the Gerousia. Just, they're just old people. That's their only qualification. Do you they're know just what? old. Yes, and another thing is, I mean, it may sound funny. It's just like uh, when you get older, right? You really don't have energy to judge people anymore because you are involved in your own shit too That's much. That's so true. Like, That's so true. You may use this time to think about what you're gonna eat, how you're gonna huh. make money, how you're gonna handle relationship with other people who are important to you. You know, like why you have to have this free time to judge others who has no relationship with you. Exactly. None of your business. Why you do such thing? So mostly I did it's just gossip little. You know, gossip a little. Yeah, I don't and, really and talk. Why, why do you gossip? It's like the same reason those people watch comedy movies, yes, right? Yes, I don't really talk bad shit after behind yeah. people. You know, I don't do that. I just gossip. Do you ever heard? You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. what happened to him? Something like no, that. No, and you're you're a chick, dude. Chicks gossip. Oh, that's <laughs> what my friend said to me too. You know, I understand you because you're a girl. Yeah, that's why you keep talking, talking. But again, talking. like when I was a teenager, right? Like in yeah. high school, I my I would have been like fucking bitches. Always, it's, always it's, gossiping. It feels like it matters to you, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, it, oh. exactly. Those things that you think matter when your world is the size of a pinhead, you know, when you're a young teenager, you, you get older and you realize just how small your little world was yes. at that time. And also, and you really don't have time to to think of anything. Time or energy. Oh. Yeah, and you just like, hmm. I can. This is the secret room, by the way. And you see these two buttons. Yeah, so that's what you're gonna be grinding for. Do it. If you do nothing else in this game, make sure you get those because it will ensure infinite replayability, especially if you're just a casual. You will have a lot of fun playing with those. And if you had a horrible experience on hard mode or whatever, you can get total vengeance on everybody. It just wipes out bosses, kills all these people in one or two hits. It's amazing. So, uh... Okay. What I was saying was like that aspect of it, getting older, having less time and less energy to care mm. about what other people are doing mm. and to bother myself much about it. I mean, really bother about it. I, I simply do not care. Yes. Uh, and, and I wish everyone the best, but I got my own shit to stew in. Yes, and, and the third thing, yeah. you know, I was thinking is like, everybody when they get old, right, you still have a physical problem to oh, show in. Oh, yeah. And also, you, you, you see your parents, whatever, like people around you, your relatives have this problem. Yeah. You start to close to the death or sickness, right? Like when you think about this and you think other people, no matter what they're doing now, they're still gonna end up <laughs> his death, That's you know? right. It's like, like Ozymandias, right? Make like you more Percy tolerable. Poem. Ma make you tolerable. Is that a word? To tolerant. <laughs> tolerant. No, I tolerant. mean, you, you made a good stab at it. Tolerant, yeah. Okay. Um, that's right. Um, everybody is dealing with something. Yeah. Even people who, I mean, we're not talking about the very worst of the worst here, you know, fucked up serial killers and stuff like that. Just average people. They're all dealing with some shit, and no matter how superficial, selfish, vain, whatever they are, mm. look, if I don't like them, I just let them be. Isn't that, isn't that easier? Yes, think about it. Just you let them be. You don't like them, yes, and if you because of your work or study, whatever, you move to another city, you may not see this person for your whole life anymore. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And they're just gone forever. Why are you having to piss off by anything they did for now? It's just uh, meaningless. You're just visiting, visit, visiting everything. Why right wasting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wasting. So like, we're, we're, you start to search for those things. This is why, like, old people get into their hobbies and, like, get into golf and stuff. Like, get out of the house. Enjoy the sunshine. Do something mindless. Um, it, mindless doesn't necessarily mean bad. A lot of the problems that we have are because, like that guy said in The Last Samurai, too many mind. Do you realize, too many mind. Do you realize <laughs> I always make friends with old people? 
Yeah, I yeah. I think yeah. they are 70s, 80s. Yes. Even I was in Israel. All my friends, most of them are old people, like 60s, 70s, 80s. You know, because I think they are most wise people. Like I can learn a lot from them. You know, the the way how they treat life. You know. Yeah. They, they say many things. Yeah, even I, if they can't articulate it, you know, you still see how how does a person who's that close to the end. Yes,、um, and also when、it. you have temper, this little temper, when you tell them, you know, the the way how they tell you back is so calm, calm you down. <laughs> yeah, calming. Oh,、yeah. so like I in video games, I I think what they did for me and the way that they work is that all of the stuff I tried to tell myself to distract me from my condition, from what had happened to me. It didn't work. All that other stuff. It, it just did not work. And video games, in particular, like really getting into trophy hunting,、um, looking looking for platinums, being a completionist about them, not just playing them for fun. My fish. Because it, it, yeah, and I think it's going to be an infinite fish too. I don't know why. Because maybe it's sorry a, to interrupt. <laughs> this is okay. I interrupt you all the time. <laughs>、uh, I'm the interrupter. That's my nickname. So,、um, what was I saying?、Uh, you say yeah, the game. Yeah, the the.、Um, if I just played the games casually, like just having some fun with the shit, it wouldn't work because my brain would still wander, my mind would still wander. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Like I'd just be kind of pressing buttons and going, I don't give a shit, and then I'd start thinking about. Panicking in life, and I would, I would go bananas. So, really finding out about platinum trophies and speed running and playing games at a higher, what I would call an artistic level, like making poetry with the games, the random code, the mechanics, the way they all interact with each other, the knowledge of the way that AI works, putting that all together with hard won experience, and then playing games beautifully. Training yourself to do that with each game, as it were, not necessarily at the most expert level, but at least at an amateur expert level. That you can really pour your mind into that. You can really divert yourself, and yeah, in the process of that, you get very angry and you get very frustrated. But when I'm yelling at the game, when I'm saying "fuck shit, motherfucker, dick snot," <laughs> I'm、uh, I am not panicking. I am not worrying about that, and the more that I did it, I just noticed the the longer periods of time I was having when I wasn't having panic attacks.、Mm-hmm. Now, of course, I'm also on drugs, not illegal drugs, but psychotropic drugs, <laughs> <laughs> SSRIs, you know. And like I, I had been on those before, but n- not a heavy amount. I realize it's not a good thing, but. Just help you to calm down. Yeah, some some people need them. It's a fact, and I needed them. And I believe me, I resisted for a long time going back on the SSRIs. You know this. How long did I wait? Like pu- putting off going back on on Zoloft after how long? Years,、mm-hmm. two three years. Yes. It was my very last resort. But live live here also gave you very stressful. Leaving the country is a whole other deal. For some people who are very adventurous, it's marvelous. They love it. Yeah, I know.、Right? Like, I know. Many you've, people you've, enjoy it. You've seen the expat communities mm. here. Mm.、Um, for me, though, I never felt so lost. But you just pursue y'all. Couldn't speak the language. Couldn't understand the people. Yeah, Tuyo, Culture was completely different. Tuyo is not an adventure. In supper, I did didn't come here for an adventure, you know. More out of necessity than anything. I did want to get away, though. But we do have good times. It's good. Sure, many good times. In fact, the suffering probably made the good times sweeter than they otherwise would have been. You look back on those times and you remember very fondly the good times, like going to that Korean restaurant. Mm. Or when we went to Seoul. Mmm,、uh, it's nice. Yeah, that was that was very nice, and sweet memories like that. 
you need to be in a place where you can make them. <laughs> and like, I, when the state I was in before, it was impossible. Uh, I, I can't imagine what you went through, like having to see me in that state and take care of me. It was, it was brutal. It was brutal and just earned my admiration, like profound admiration forever. Forever. It showed me what you were made of, you know, to deal with someone in that state. I know you don't want to toot your own horn, you want to brag about it, but yeah. Uh, all of which I just say to emphasize the fact that it was hell, the word that she chose, hell, was not um, inaccurate. And video games helped me get out of hell. I I'm, I'm being very literal. I was literally in hell. Not metaphorically. Literally. There were flames inside of me and outside of me. I could see them. The world was a prison. That's what I felt. Derealization. I went from this world to hell. And I lived there. And video games pulled me, helped pull me out of that. Um, and so, when I have a chance to share that with her, and like we did with this game, and form a memory around it, and make a video about it. Yeah, it's like Sullivan in Sullivan Travels, just seeing someone laugh. How, how much do you cherish that? No. Just being normal, just having a normal feeling or a normal day. No, her hometown. I think if I want to record this moment, you know, I gonna go. I always gonna watch this video. It gonna bring me to the bank. You know what I mean? Like uh, the people, the environment, everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be for a sure. treasure. It's gonna be a treasure. Absolutely a treasure. So it's really good, you know. Like we can have something left. And you can you have a chance to form that kind of memory around anything. You mm. take it. Doesn't matter what it is, but uh, I don't know. I suppose the point is just that River City Girls can be that as a co-op experience. It's really good, you know. Like you know, old times, people only can. Like write down things. Yeah. The diary, yeah. right? The books uh, and the letters. But now it's so good you can have this uh, voice, you know, the, the play action inside. Yeah. Also, we can have the phone, like take some uh, videos. Well, you know, there's there's an interesting thing about that. Like, there's there's pros and cons. You remember that episode of Black Mirror, where the guy his his wife dies and. Uh, he he has this AI system that uh, like recreates her her yes. voice and her yes and then and there's even like a a man a, a robot or something right I think it's a, the woman's husband died and she oh was it was it the husband uh, okay I'm and I'm she wrong. has a totally robot and everything look exactly like he, her husband but deep down it's different she knows it's not him oh uh. that's really all it is like. Even if he was doing everything exactly the same, you know, it's not him. And so the argument is that in the old days, when you just had your memories and maybe a diary or something, or your communal stories that you told of the person, um, the grieving process was allowed to take a more natural course in accord with your own memory. And ultimately forgetting is what allows us to move on, you know, uh, you, you, you forget enough to where this person doesn't completely occupy your mind or w whatever, whatever trauma doesn't completely occupy it. But when you have the voice recording and um, video and pictures and everything, to the more we have to perpetually hang on to as many details as possible, mm. it may be harder to, to let go at a, at a certain point. Mm. I mean, that's the argument that it's not actually an unambiguously good thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm torn about it. I'm torn. And also, it's a record of your own life, you know, like when you are old, old enough and close to the dead, you know, death. Yeah. And, and you just um, put all these videos on what you talked before, right? That would be so sad. 
<laughs> to me anyway. I don't know. I really don't know what I'm gonna feel about. Maybe sweet, maybe sad. I, I really don't know. No. Well, you're just... When you're closer to the end than you are to the beginning, and you look back at a time when you were closer to the beginning, man, I don't know. To me, that is just a reminder of how, how fleeting everything is, how ephemeral. But maybe, maybe your psychological response to that is different than mine. I don't know. I, I think your attitude towards these things is a little different than mine, not, not necessarily in a bad way. Because I, I'm not going to say that my way is healthy. It just, it is what it is. You can't really control it. Like, there was this psychologist <clears throat> named Erwin Strauss. He was a, a Gestalt psychologist a, a, from the Gestalt school. They, they thought of things, consciousness as a whole, not as, like, divided into parts like ego, id, and super ego, and subconscious, and conscious, and all that stuff, right? Mm. Um, and perception they thought of in the same way. Mm. Oh, here's here's dog. Here's a gestalt. Garbage face. I always remember that. What? Did she say it already? Watch my dog. Wait, walking my dog. Garbage face. Whatever. Garbage face. There it is. That's your favorite line in the game, oh, right? Garbage face. She's super cute. Yeah. So um. Yeah. He. In one of his books, which is very hard to obtain now, but I, I managed to, to read it when I was doing research in grad school, and he he had um he had a case which he talked about about a, a young boy who was just walking down the street one day with his father or something, and he saw a man get hit and run over and killed by a car. Okay. And he sees all of the, you know, all of the paramedics and people come and sees the body get covered with the white sheet and go into the into the ambulance to go to the morgue. And uh, his father also saw it. And Strauss's point was that this this kid went on to have. I don't I don't know how to describe it. I, I'm not good with clinical language, but. To have psychological issues where he would walk down the street and in all of the houses he would he would just imagine like there were ghosts and he would start to perceive them like in house windows and you know how it is at night when you're walking down the street and yes you, you know you see the lights on in in all of the apartments or yes. in the houses mm. it's a little eerie isn't it mm. and your imagination can run wild but for him it was like dead people and ghosts and he like basically perceived them there and he was terrified and paralyzed and he couldn't get the thought out of his mind mm. and i think strauss actually treated this kid mm. um but the father didn't have such a problem he just took it in stride and the way that he put it was like when something like that happens for the first time it's like a new meaning that you hadn't been aware of mm. is inserted into your overall web of meanings in your mind mm. And that meaning changes over time as things become more familiar to you. So for the kid, the proposition was man can die. It was something he was not really aware of before. Mm. Right? Man can die. Mm. And that just changes everything. And the, the shock, the, the, the shock of the insertion of that meaning into his conscious world broke him. Whereas the father, the meaning that he took from it was just, a man died. You see the difference? Yes. He already had that general proposition in his mind, man can die. In this case, just fell under it. A man can die. Yes. Uh, a man died. That's what happens because man can die. Mm. But the kid didn't even have that general proposition yet. Man can die. Uh, I remember when I got that. I remember the exact moment. It's kind of funny, but I, I do remember. I don't know if you remember when you became aware of death as a real thing. For me, it was, I was a young boy. I was five or six years old. I was watching Top Gun. Top Gun, you know, with Tom Cruise mm, and yes. Anthony Edwards. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody knows when Goose dies, right? Mm. It's very sad. 
But for me, I was like, I always thought Goose was gonna come back. Like, Goose, he just comes back later. It's sort of like Phoebe in that episode of, of Friends, right? Like, when, when when they're watching Old Yeller. Yes. And she, her, mom, her mom never let her see the end of these sad movies. Uh-huh. Uh, I was just a kid, so I was like, yeah, he'll, he'll come back. He just... He's just out of the movie for now. I didn't really know. I didn't understand. And then my stepsister, she, who was watching it with me, she said, what do you mean? He's dead. I said, what do you mean he's dead? She said, you know people don't come back from being dead, right? Something to that effect. You know, mm. I, don't, I don't know exactly what she said, but she basically made the fact of death very clear to me. Mm. And hey, it was such a profound moment in my life that I remember it to this day. Everything really changed after that. Do you remember? I remember the first yeah. time I close to death. Not close to death. I be with death. It's my grandma's death, you know. Uh. But weird thing is, I was uh, ten years old. Yeah. Ten years old, and I feel nothing. And I just say all the dogs are crying. Yeah. So I will cry too. Oh, so I, I just know I won't see my grandma again. You did know that. You I know that, that, but yeah. I don't feel too much. I, I don't know how to do it, you know. I just think everybody crying is like they performing something. Huh. You know, it's just, I, I, don't, I don't understand. You know why you didn't feel anything? I don't know why. I still don't figure out why I don't feel anything, you know. But Maybe when, you're a psycho. <laughs> Your cycle. I'm a psycho. Yeah. I just when time goes on, I know I gonna have disease, you know, sickness, yeah. and I gonna die too. So I feel really sad when it related to me myself. Sure, you know? sure, yeah. The only thing sad for me is my grandma won't come back anymore. Yeah. But I don't feel so deep because I myself not involved in too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't. I don't know how to deal with it. You know, like. When it happens, uh, my, my both of my grandmothers are, are dead as well. And I remember when they died, I I was very close to to one of my grandmothers. And I don't know, I can't say I, I reacted very well, meaning like I, I don't think I showed grief that people would think was appropriate. Um, I didn't go to the funeral. Why though? Was it because I didn't feel anything? Not at all. It's because I felt too much, and I had been been to too many funerals, and I just I couldn't deal with it, man. It reminds me of that movie, The Mosquito Coast, which is one of my favorite movies, as you know. You remember the one with Harrison Ford, directed yes. by Peter Weir. He goes down with his family into the jungle. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Great movie, everyone. You should you should definitely watch it if you haven't seen it. It's fantastic. He, um, Harrison Ford's character, he's explaining to his family one night in the jungle why he took them and why they left. And he says, uh, he, he tells him this story about when his mother was sick and in the hospital. And, I don't know, she... He was caring for her and she like woke up one night and looked at him and said, why don't you feed me some rat poison or something? And he, he was just horrified. And he left. Yeah. Left his, left his mom in the hospital and, and she died. And he said, people thought I was the height of callousness. And he says, no, not true. I loved her too much to watch her die. Now. Like, of course, that's no excuse for avoiding your responsibilities and, like, being there for someone in their in their moment of truth, as it were. But, again, as we were talking about, you, you do understand these things. And I, I, I may have comported myself in the same way, to, to some degree, you know, with my grandmother. Yes. Yeah, I... Hard to say. I, I just don't know how to deal with it. Know what I mean? Even though I still don't know how to deal with anything. Nah, any deaths, nah. Don't know how to deal with it's it. Just, people are just so weird, you know. You have these feelings and you still don't know how to deal with it. 
You can put like you feel really sad,、mm. but not only like that. Really, I just don't know how to describe it. No, definitely don't know how to describe it. What can you say? You know, what can you do? Some people always judge judge you like、uh, you not feel so sad enough. You know, I mean, I what look, do you mean not feel sad enough? You want me suicide or what? I know. know. And again, what what I was what I think is. If I allow myself to dwell on this,、mm. if I allow myself to really think, you're gonna drown in, drown, exactly,、mm. gonna drown. And so, this is why people avoid. You know, and it may not be the healthiest thing avoiding, confronting these things, but I gotta tell you, like, it's sometimes better than the alternative, right? And this good, that comes back to the issue of escapism. Right, like, what are you escaping from? Like with video games, what was I escaping from? What am I escaping from when I play River City Girls with you? And I really don't know what escape means. Like, they say escape. I'm escaping from hell. That's what I'm escaping from, and I don't feel, I don't feel bad about it at all. You know, that's what it means to me. Running away from a constant torture session. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm doing. Gladly. How about you? Sim. May I、oh, help you? I don't know if video games serve that function for you. What does serve that function for you? Anything? Me? Yeah. Like. Be honest. Food. Food. I'm not fat ass. Yes,、uh, just for the record,、If、she is not obese. So. <laughs> I really like food and sleep. But she does like food. Mm, food, I, food and sleep. Now, what's that all about? I mean, I like books before. You know, I really can find my own word in the novel. So, I like. So what happened? I mean, why why not books anymore? After I go into the academic way, you know, like ah,、uh, uh, academia killed your enthusiasm <laughs> for yes, learning. Yes, that's a very common story. Every time <laughs> you read books, you will think, oh, it will help you to write a paper. If not, then the book is not valuable. So it's worthless to you. And I, whenever I think of this purpose, when I read a book, I just think, no, you shouldn't like、uh, destroy the enjoy enjoyable moment. You know,、sure. me, me and the book, and you just waste it. Sure. You don't know how to enjoy it. Just don't read it.、Mm. So I always think like,、uh, because I like write. You know, I always want to be a novelist.、Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking like after I graduate, and.、Uh, I don't know what I gonna do in the future. Maybe in college, teaching college in China. Maybe I gonna find another job. Who knows? But I gonna treat my read time again. You know, like treat them nice. Wow! Now think of this. Other,、uh, this wasting time stuff anymore. So basically, you know, not so for purpose anymore. Once you get out of the academic world,、yes. you can enjoy reading and learning again. And、really、yes, <laughs> yes. I want to know. Totally get it.、Mm. Yeah. Because you know, novel is most、uh, like useless stuff in the world if you are not study literature. I mean. Yeah, I guess. Really like.、Uh, But, um, so how how does it how does it become food? Like how does food and sleep become a solace for you? Seriously. Because because every time when I eat, I always watch some stupid shows. No, I don't like modern shows. I like some. Is、uh, it is that really it though? I mean, don't you associate it with something deeper? Eating. No. When I, I mean, eat and watch stupid shows, all I all I do is think nothing. You know, like I I kind of escape from. But you're、food. you're enjoying the taste and the food and spicy, it's, it's kind like of spicy it's, food. It's、so. kind of a pure enjoyment, right? A thoughtless, pure, mindless enjoyment,、mm-hmm. right? And also, I like complicated food. You know, yeah, like、uh, hot pot or this spicy food. Hot pot's great. I don't finish、yeah. it like、uh, in one minute. Like, yeah, hamburger stuff. You know, like. It makes me think that that's that's one of the reasons why, like the old aristocrats, maybe not just aristocrats, but I know for sure the old aristocrats, the old European aristocracy, going back to Rome and Greece, they had these huge dinners, you know, like one course after another,、mm-hmm. aperitifs and、mm. after dinner liqueurs and mm. coffee, and mm. you just on and on and on and on. Here's the first, here's the second, here's the third. 
Like, it makes me sort of think that's a similar rationale for that. Yes. Well, either you think that time is all yours. It's all yours, you know. And also, I like sleeping time at night. Because nobody gonna text, text you. Nobody will <laughs> tell you something business, you know what I mean? Like, you don't need to think about anything. You know it's sleepy time. Everybody gonna relax and rest. So it's really quiet. That's interesting. Yeah, that... One of the two moments, food and sleep is my favorite time. No, it's my treatment, you know. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah, nothing else. You may think it's superficial, of right? Of course I don't think it's superficial. Have you been listening to what I've been saying? Nah, no way. And I, I know you well enough to know that that's the case, so... Also, I want to make a workout. It's my favorite moment too, but it's really hard to enjoy it. Uh, some people just love that and some people don't. I'm one of the people who don't. Although when I was a kid, I was... That's all I did. I mean, I'm probably only alive right now because I exercised so much when I was a kid. Like, I was... I was fortunate that I grew up in the 80s and, you know, we didn't, we just had Nintendos and shit and barely a VHS Doesn't thing. Have phone. No, no cell phone, yeah. We still, still have smartphone. <laughs> we we still had rotary dials in our, in our house, basically. We didn't even have answering machines until I was like eight or nine. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, if we wanted to do something as well, restless yeah. kids... I mean, it's nature. Yeah, I mean, you. It sounds like a fucking cliche, but it's true. We went outside. I, let's go to let's go to Ryan's house. Knock knock. Can Ryan come out and play? Me too. Let's go to Richard's house. That's my choice. Knock knock. Too. And then we just go. What do you want to do? And we would we would wander down the back into the into the creek that was by our house and just you know look, look for bottles that we could break over trees. Wrestle. Burning the ants. <laughs> Burning ants. <laughs> And then later on, it was like more organized sports and stuff. We'd go to the park and play basketball or go to the high school and play football on the football field. Always doing shit. Always active. But now, it's the exact opposite. Right? And when I... Workout on purpose is for keep health, keep shape. Yeah, I think it's just because I don't have the energy anymore. You know, all I had when I was a kid was energy. And I needed to spend it somehow, but now I'm more about like, I, oh, well, I'm more about I want to conserve my energy. But this boss is the one you hate, really, isn't it? Mm. Like apart from the third boss, noise, like the Guitar Hero boss. Uh, I, I. How this good guitar stuff? I wasn't able to figure out like a real pattern to to dodging all of her. Do you know we have a very similar game? On QQ, you know QQ is well, it, like it's a, it's it's a rhythm game. Like there's a lot of games like oh, that. Oh, you, you know that too, right? I saw it um, invented by Chinese. <laughs> Maybe not. You always think everything. Is <laughs> I mean, I guess a lot of things were, but no. I mean, there's like Guitar Hero is the most famous. The, 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 it's a you have to press then to rhythm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, man, you ever seen those videos of people who do really intense? I know like, their fingers like, like magic that, fingers. Right. Oh, yeah, it's my it's cousin un- can do that. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Nobody insults me. People are just amazing sometimes in the things that they can do. Some people's finger is so how to say? My finger is some dumb, dumb fingers. Oh. Yeah. I like that. Dumb and fingers. your finger is fat finger. What? I- I don't have fat fingers. I remember sometimes you text. No, there's one time you text to your friend. You say, oh, my finger is too fat. I couldn't press on the on the keyboard. Something like my phone is too small. You know, before the iPhone become big. Um, iPhone 5, iPhone 4, I think. Small yeah. one, you know. Yeah. And you tell your friend. You say, my finger is too fat. I always miss, uh, miss press some some keyboard it's true yes. no it you remember the flip phones like the the initial oh my cell God, phones the ones where you oh. and you had to like literally press the buttons like three times to get to the letter yes and sometimes one finger can press two bu- two letters i hated that oh i hated that here's what i was wondering though like when i when i went to tokyo like 
I, I noticed that the people in in the subway, like when they were texting, they have this program where they will like. Ah,、right? my my dad is using that too. So you guys do have that because、oh. I never see any of you guys use it here. You just use the WeChat and you type in.、Pinyin. Maybe maybe young people don't like that, but my mom, my dad really like it. My dad、oh. write all the time,、but、literally you write. You, you don't use it. No. You don't like it、so、because you, I think. You think it's easier to just write the opinion. Because I never try the right,、yeah. so I don't know if it's easy or not. I just think my dad doesn't have good eyesight, you know. Yeah. He may like、uh, just the right. Yeah. God. Because I... you think Japanese character is easier. Some of them, but I mean, because the... Chinese character is really many of their characters are Chinese characters. You know this. So, but they are simplified. So you think like when they're doing that, they're writing in um, what is it, hiragana? I don't know. I don't know Japanese. I don't know Japanese either. But I'm just I'm looking at this video now, and I'm really hoping that this frame rate is just the playback on this video, because look at this frame rate. Look at it. It's、mm. what is that like ten frames per second? It's fucking awful. Can't be the case. It says fifty nine point nine p. I mean that's like sixty frames per second. It, this cannot be the frame rate. Anyway,、uh, I have to extend an apology to the viewers. If this really, if this frame rate that I'm seeing now is the frame rate that you guys are seeing, man, I'm sorry. I don't know why. I've never had issues with、uh, the frame rate in my recordings before. It certainly wasn't an issue when we were playing. So. So it just happened when you retro with me. Could be, or this could just be a playback issue on Final Cut. It does happen sometimes.、Um, it, it's not rendering fast enough, or something like that. But be, beats the shit out of me. I don't know. But、um, yeah, so if if you had to pick another game to play after this in co-op, what would it be? Of course, I expect some new game. So you you want a new game? Like, cause I was thinking about doing Contra, with you, like the old NES game. Oh. Or Streets of Rage, that's, or that's something. That's a Nintendo game, right? Yes, Nintendo game.、Yeah. I know that Chinese called Hun Dou Luo. Hun Dou Luo. Meaning what? Hun Dou Luo meaning barely nothing. It's just a ghost fighting something like that. Ah,、uh, interesting. And、uh, that game, my dad always played on Nintendo when when I was a kid. And I remember our Nintendo is like black and white. You know, like you had a black and white. No, I mean the pictures showing on the screen. You're kidding me! You didn't have a color.、Uh, why? Poor country. I don't know. It's <laughs> poor country. <laughs> what? What do you really? No, no. Because I thought that、um, you know your TV was your TV black and white. Uh, yes. Full wow. Full wow. Because if your TV was in color. Then the Nintendo should have been in color as well. No, Nintendo. My dad said it's some friend brought from Japan or something. So、like、maybe you had a Famicom. Maybe. You... But I, all I remember is just、uh, black and white. I don't remember TV too much. I think it's colorful.、Mm. But we don't have a channel. We just have eight channels. On TV. Oh. Eight channels. Oh, we don't have. We don't even have a controller. It's、uh, all、Whoa. all the buttons is on the TV. Yeah, I, we we had one, TVs two, like that when two, I was eight, and,、uh, when I was very young. You have the little knob and you yes, turn it. Yes,、right. and all the program I set up, it's just like、uh, the Chinese only show, you know, drama drama show, and the some、uh, I don't remember what they have. It's just eight eight channels. We don't know anything. Anything good. My mom said I was really into a drama channel, drama drama show when I was three years old, and I was、uh, I was trying to sing a song from that show. You know, my mom said I was really into it. 
That's all. That's all I remember, you know. And uh, other things I don't. And when we have computer, when I start to play computer, when I was ten years old, ten years old, nineties, you know. So ten. We have computer. I mean, that was before I had a computer. I I only played it at school. At that point, I mean, and uh, I remember I used MSN that time. Now tell us where Cooney you know, and before that, yeah, because don't, you're you're younger than me. We, we didn't have, have MSN when I was a kid. Uh, you don't have. And I remember my dad was uh, putting some uh, astronaut, like CD, you know, in that uh, in computer. They have CD player, yeah, yeah, right? CD ROM. And uh, I was uh, I was watching some astronaut knowledge. Hmm. That's all I remember, and they make the stars、uh, with their stories,、uh, like Zeus, you know. Dude, when I was a kid, and we were in school, we had Macintosh computers. All the computers were Macintosh, and they were these tiny little boxes.、Uh, probably the screen smaller than than the screen on my laptop right now, but big. You know CPUs, like、mm. big fat things. And、like、always, I remember we have the mouse, right? The yeah, mouse. the mouse. To click things, and、uh, the mouse under the mouse, they always have a ball. Yeah, you remember、yeah. that ball? I always pick it out. Then you had your mouse pad, and, and also you have software. Software stuff is like、uh, so. Do you remember floppy disks? Did you have floppy yeah, disks? Yeah, yeah, floppy disks. That's what so, I mean. Yeah,、mm. that. So we had games or. A game, at least on a floppy disk, and I'm sure everyone from the '80s will remember this: the Oregon Trail. I mean, how cards? You you played cards. We probably we probably had cards too, but we weren't allowed to play that in school. So they'd just take us into the computer lab, and we would play Oregon Trail. Thought it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, I thought the fucking Oregon. I always wanted to beat it, man. I was so. Angry at that game that I could never beat it. I always died、mm, on the Oregon、sad. Trail. But yeah, it was that primitive. And my aunt had a Mac. Back then, like all computers were Mac, like the ones in schools and stuff. Really? Yeah, and they went away once IBM and Windows took over things. You know, with the internet revolution and. I remember mine is、uh, Windows. Yeah, well, you're you're significantly younger than me. Oh. You know that that's a long time, like eight years.、Um, so yeah, for it, Apple basically went under、um, after after a time, and it was、uh, it was Steve Jobs who brought him back to relevance. But anyway, that's that's ancient history. We、uh, the point is just that like these little computers we had growing up. Yeah, we didn't have any internet. I mean, I, I, at some point I did when I was like thirteen, thirteen or fourteen. I, think. I remember the first time when I had internet. You know, my dad told at me at home. You mean? Oh,、uh, I think it's my dad's、uh, laboratory. My my dad in charge of some、uh, internet like、uh, program. You know, like、uh-huh. uh, he he hired some engineer to build some. Internet program. I just when my dad first time told me the internet, I don't know. I don't even know what internet is. I don't know what that means.、Uh, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. I they they had to teach us how to use email at school.、Mm-hmm. I remember, and I'm like, dude, I, I was so wrong about everything. I was like, this is so stupid. I could just write a letter. <laughs> I never used email. I thought it was so stupid. And I remember when blogging first came out. This is much later, but I remember when pe- blogs started to become a thing in like the early 2000s. Oh, I was like, this is so stupid. It's gonna be the end of knowledge. Like any idiot can write anything he wants. I saw none of the potential. For blogs, I was a total moron when YouTube came out. Oh, this is so fucking dumb. Everybody's just gonna put their dumbass shit up on. Now, everyone does put up their dumbass shit, but I mean, there's so much more to it. So much more. And yeah, there's a reason I am not a billionaire tech inventor because because you don't have perspective. Oh, none. I am I am a horse and buggy person, like conservative. Very. So,、uh, 
You know, I'm like, what? I'll, I'll take your lead if you invent something and I find it useful, but I have learned at least not to pass early judgment on things. Although, I will say I was right about Twitter. Twitter is a shit house. And I always thought it was a shit house, and that's indeed what it's turned out to be. I don't think the world or my own life or anybody's life would be worse without Twitter. We could easily live without that. Yes. That's just my opinion, that's what I think. But wait, wait, and now we're yours, so but I don't know what YouTube that. has genuinely valuable things on it. It really does. And it would be an absolute this is why people are fighting so hard over what's going on on YouTube and so forth. I don't want to get into it, but uh, it matters what happens to YouTube. Do you know the first time when I realized that uh, computer and internet have their value is uh, in college. You know, that time I was trying to pass a master exam, mm -hmm. you know, entrance exam. And uh, I wanted to go to another college, better college. Mm -hmm. And I download all these materials, the videos from their professor, you know, Deng, you know, the great philosopher in China, and their lectures and the ebooks. You know, that time, many, many books are so expensive, and some are not exist, uh, not exist in library. You have to download from the uh, from online, you know, and also you watch some. I watch some movies. It's really good, you yeah. know, because they don't always show movies on our TV, if you know what I mean. Like, they always have this drama stuff, yeah. this normal, like, program. They don't have TVs all the time, uh, movies all the time. So, sure. you watch movies, I listen to music, you know, rock and roll you, stuff. You, you got some culture. Mm. Yeah. And uh, ebooks, really like. And also, it makes me realize one thing, like, uh, before our scholars, how hard for them. They don't have any computer, they don't have database. All they can do is remember all the things in their brain. You know, especially for this uh, history. I know, it's Scholars, crazy. you know. But that that's arguably why really their, their memories, memories used to be better, at least of the people who were tasked with being cognitive in their so lives. So I don't know if now we are more lazy, make, make us more lazy. Or just make us oh, more dumb, it you know. It definitely makes us lazier in a Sing sense, but it, it's it also allows people who would not be able to rise to a certain level to rise higher than they otherwise could. Like you, you might argue that it lowers the ceiling, like it makes the highest level lower. I mean, you could argue that at least with respect to certain things. Maybe not science or tech fields, but uh, certainly in the humanities. Like one of the big, big requirements for Plato for being a philosopher was like having a, a very good memory. Yes. And uh, people train for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I they just, did. I just couldn't imagine if now I don't have computer, I don't have internet, how I can really write a paper. I just couldn't do it. No, me can either. You? Me, no way, no way. I think I'm some old school. Maybe they can like in a like. Who are in their 80s, you know, they go to library, they check the books they want. But for us, if we don't have books online or we don't have Google Scholar, you know, uh, it's, it's incredible what they're able to do. Like when you go back far to your period, like in, in ancient Sumer or uh, Babylon in the Babylonian period with the bards there, and then the, ba the bards in the uh, the, just the general culture of the ancient Near East, and then you go to Crete and the Greek world and into Ionia, which is Western Turkey, but it was significantly Greek back then. The, things like the Iliad were initially just things that people sang or sung. I'm not sure what the... You teach English. I don't know what the proper... <laughs> Which one is the participle? <laughs> Which one is the participle? Don't tell you I teach English. <laughs> Sometimes you do. Okay, I just think your English is so bad. Then. Well, it's it's not. It, it you know the rules. I know grammar. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know which one is the participle. Song, S U N J. That's the participle. Mm. So sing, sang, song. So people sang. I think that's the proper English. See, I don't know fucking English. 
Um, <laughs> they just sang it from memory. S A N J. The whole thing. Yeah. The entire fucking thing. It's like the longest epic poem ever written. That's why they have this oral tradition. From memory. Yeah, oral tradition. The whole thing was oral tradition before. It's incredible. And that wasn't the only thing they had in their memory so either. About they still have this in some places in the world. Like, I watched this documentary on, uh, I think it was PBS. It was a long time ago. But there was this classicist, amateur classicist named Michael Wood. And he would often go on treks that ancient uh, generals went on and things like that. And he did one called In the Footsteps of Alexander. And he basically traversed physically the path that Alexander did through West Asia and into India. And so he went to all these places in the in the mountains and in, in Afghanistan and places like that. And these a lot of these cultures, they really haven't changed all that much in thousands of years. And so they the, he, he's in one of these places and they, he's in a restaurant and they still have these, like the equivalent of bards, like singing with their leers kind of epic poems it's crazy like it still exists they can do it but we can't yeah you, you do lose some things you know <laughs> our science you know technique stuff is developing definitely right yeah, yeah. but our humanities yeah. is dying yeah it's it's unfortunate but so if now you want to say some epic it's just epic for science no epic for mm. poem mm. You know, like uh, I pick for literature. I don't think such thing exists anymore. So why, why don't epic poems exist anymore? Because we don't have any epics. Like I mean, like, do you remember Joyce, like James Joyce? Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Dubliners, Ulysses, yeah, Finnegan's yeah. Wake. Uh huh. She, she knows who James Joyce is. She just, she's Chinese, so she, the names are different in Chinese. So I have to yeah. explain to her. Um, yeah, so Ulysses was like... Um, uh, 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 yeah, a, par a parody of the Odyssey in a modern-day context that takes place in, in a day in Dublin or something. Mm. And... Um, you know, it, the, just the simple fact of writing that as an epic was part of what made the book re revolutionary. I just mean part of what made it revolutionary. It's hard to understand. It's very hard to understand. In fact, I think, I, uh, like, uh, look, I, I'm going to be honest here. I can't stand Joyce, but um, I did read Ulysses at one point. I read that too. Yeah, I, I, no, I'm going to put quotes around that. I read it, quote unquote. Because uh, we don't really know yeah, what I read. I would go 50 pages at a time and be like, all right, I read that. For his mom, right? Yeah, jerking off and stuff. And, mm. yeah. It was, um, there was a big trial over it in America where people wanted, I think it was banned. Or maybe they tried to ban it and, and, and then they had a big free speech case over it or something. But it was a controversial book. They called it Smut. Henry Miller wrote an essay about it. I really appreciate the one who translates in Chinese because, you know, you even couldn't read it and you couldn't understand and you did it in Chinese. I really appreciate it. It's a very good scholar. That's the point all. is, I, I think part of the point that Joyce was making was like, if, if there is going to be an epic poetry of modernity in our day and age, it's got to be like this. It's got to you know, have the, all of the psychology and the psychological insights from Freud and so forth. It's got to have the subconscious. It's got to have an individual focus. It's got to be limited and small in scope in the sense of like, it just takes place in one day and nothing really happens, basically. You know, that's the modern epic. And in a sense, it's a big joke. Is that the reason why we don't have epic poetry anymore? Or is this epic poetry? Like, I is, is River like... City Girls like our new form of epic poetry? Like, this kind of stuff. I just think it's a standard thing. You know, standard from, from what to what? From... First of all, what the standard is, is like what people think is valuable to them. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if you say it's standard, also you can say it's purpose. 
purpose to for you to pursue the life. Yeah, right. Like many people, just all they think about is like how to feed yourself, how to feed your family. Yes. You know, doing something you should do. Yes. But before I like when you have big family, you give a lot of birth. Yeah. To babies, you have a lot of things. You know, like family is not only thing. You have to feed them. Mm-hmm. You always think about another thing, you know, and also you're close to the nature. Mm-hmm. You make use how this creative like、uh, idea. You think so? So you think being closer to nature inspires people with creative ideas? Yes. I mean, that's a very romantic notion in the in the in the real sense, not not the Notting Hill notebook sense, but romantic in the sense of the romantics.、Um, and there's probably something to it. I mean, as as someone myself who has a real aversion to nature, I hate nature. Um, be, because I'm allergic to everything, and it just makes me sick. <laughs> Now I'm just one of those people. You, you put me in nature, and I wilt. I become a shrinking violet. The animals, I don't like them. They scare me. The bugs are dangerous and nasty. There's shit everywhere.、Uh, I don't know. <laughs> nice. No, I don't. I don't like nature. You just break but, the fancy of nature. But but on the other hand, I'm not a poet. You understand? Like, yes. I I am not a poet. I I don't have a poetic bone in my body. I appreciate poetry, but I can't do it. If you are po-、sure. poet, you will like adventure. You will like、yeah. nature. You will like living under the sky. You know. Just... Yeah, you will at least like it. I guess.、Mm. That's why you just do research of human beings. Very Socratic in that way, I guess, right?、Mm. Like, pay attention to the human things. That's、mm. why. Yeah,、uh, it's interesting. Poets are more, and I mean great poets. I'm not talking about modern poets who are all dog shit. Yeah. yeah. And great poets, Wordsworth, Whitman,、yes. Shelley, all、yes. those people.、Uh, all wisdom books. D. H. Lawrence.、Oh. Yeah, they're all like. Drawn to nature, yes. Whereas philosophers, people like so- starting with Socrates, urban, they're drawn to cities. Why? Drawn to people. They're they're think they're spending most of their time thinking about people.、Mm. Um, there are exceptions to that, but see, think about the one. Like Kant, he said two things, right? Starry skies above and the moral law within. Oh, yeah. One is about nature, another is about human beings. Yeah, that's true. And he, but see, when he said starry skies above, he was more of a scientist. You know, he was like an astronomer. But to me, it's more like came、religious. up with a with a lo- well, that too, that too. Because、yes. no matter what you、You're、do,、right. you have to like、uh, scare off something. You know what I mean? But think about like I'm gonna leave Rousseau out of this because that's complicated, but. Think about the one philosopher who arguably like worshipped nature like a poet. Who do you think it was? Nature. No, it, it wasn't, but it was someone who was heavily influenced by nature. Cool. Heidegger.、Mm. Yes. Because he is a poet. Yeah, and that's my point. Like he was the one. Great philosopher who really, really, arguably worshipped nature in an almost romantic and sense, his friend, and、so. he is the one who did the most to sort of try to transform philosophy into poetry, right? I mean, it is it is interesting in that way. So, are you saying that like the poetic mindset, as opposed to the philosophical mindset, which is still quite active and alive in the urban centers? But the poetic attitude, which is more intimately bound up with a, a reverence for nature, a mystical reverence for nature, that's dying or dead. dead. And so poetry, dead. Dead. So poetry has died accordingly. Yes. You think? Yes. How about in China? Same deal. Like as China has become more urbanized and people. Urbanized, and we don't have just name any. Poem, you think is great in yeah, China? In modern, no, like the world. Oh, mo- modern. I I can't think of anything after like T. S. Eliot. 
honestly. Yes, that's the reason. You know, like great literature, it's really hard. To think of anyone of them. There are still great authors living today, like Kundera,、um, but they're very old. He is young; he's ninety. Yeah,、uh, uh, Solzhenitsyn died recently. I don't know. I mean, hard, right? Because the literature is dying too. And I remember Kundera was saying something to that effect, but his argument was more in his book on literature. Remember, you told me to read it.、Mm. Kundera said that it was more about exploration. So, you know, throughout the history of literature, there had been a series of discoveries, and he actually said this. Like, I, I think I'm、so. quoting almost verbatim. He said, "Any literature that does not discover something is immoral." Yes. Like he said that. And、so that's what I mean. You know, he, you... his point is that in our day and age, like there, we've got to the point where at least we think or feel that there's nothing significant left to discover,、mm. either about nature or about ourselves.、Uh, we're sort of tinkering around the edges, or、uh, rehashing old things in nostalgic fashion. So or... in a short term, it's sharp. You have to have a sharp perspective. You know, if you are numb, you couldn't discover anything. Numb. Yes. Do you think modern modern people are numb? Totally numb. Numb. Because、um, we are covered by all the things we should do. For example, do you make how much money you made? You know something like that. What decent job you have? It's hard to say.、I'm、What not, achievement you have? Like things like this, you know, you you covered by the purpose, practical purpose, you know, the standard change. They only care about how much money you made. Do you can? Do you do you support your family? Things like this. If you are saying like you study something, I'll say, oh, okay, so you, you study this. You, what you, you think there's not enough leisure time for people to to care about spiritual things, so to speak? Yes, numb. I mean, I don't know if numb. Think about this. Like、uh, many people ask me what I'm doing, right? I、All、say、right. I'm doing my PhD. Oh, they say what major? If I say religion, say, oh my God, what's that? Can can it help you to make any money in the future? What job you can get? It's totally useless. Okay. Why you have to choose this? Okay, I I I get that, but hasn't that more or less always been the case? You know, like going back to Socrates, what did they do to him? But at least many people worship him and together with him want to study with him. Well, that I mean, take any figure in in the religious studies world today. You know, like they they have their followers, their little <laughs> cult. <you know? laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. And, but, and all that was around Socrates was to, like a cult. But you have to become famous. How you can become famous? You mean before people respect you? Yes. Until then, they just say you're wasting your time. Yes. Your standard great... be, be, become become famous. What? Publishing, right? Like do you think、sure. Socrates? Oh, it's、uh, sorry, my. Explain to us how embarrassed you are about this. I couldn't jump. Apologize. Say, sorry. I'm sorry for making this video so unprofessional. So unbearable. Unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny though.、Oh. Okay, so what were you saying? I'm、um, saying like you want to be. Famous, you know. Yeah, that's it, why you it, have it, your followers. It's the same with YouTube, you know. Like, it, it. What's the difference between this video being, you know, taken seriously and commented on by all these people across the culture, and just being written off as being、uh, two people yap yap yapping away <laughs> over over a cheesy video game? I don't know you,、game. but in China, if you want to make your video popular,、uh -huh. you have to pay. You have to pay. I don't well, know I pay who, but. You know, like you cash rules everything around me.、Oh. Cream get the money. Wu Tang Clan, money, the money, wise Wu Tang Clan. Like you yeah, money. Yeesh, that's judgy. What's that money song you like? It's called Money. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's a great song. That in Pink Floyd. Oh, not a very good one. Money is a drag. Open those doors before I open your. So um. To cut short our pontificating now, we are coming up to the final boss,、uh, at least the first final boss, and 
to get through there, she like is not the true final boss. Not I, I'm not but sure who is considered the canon final yeah, boss in this game open. yet. But I, I'm going to show both this boss and the special boss, which is uh, Hasabe and, and Mami. I hope you two just, uh, we just fight this boss, right? Yeah, we, we the just... The hidden boss, you fight by yourself. Did I? I thought you fought with me. Oh, I don't remember. Maybe I'll say. I mean, we, I did use the tank pin. Oh, oh. yes, I remember. We fight together. Yeah, okay, so we have to collect these explosives first, and then we're going into the final boss. I thought we already did that. Man, this frame rate. Oh, I'm sorry. It's so ugly. So, to, let's pose a, a, the most difficult question before we come to the final boss. Uh, the most philosophical question in this most unphilosophical of games. <laughs> what, what is the condition for poetry to come alive again. Is it even possible? I don't think it, so. Is, is even T.S. Eliot possible now? Is even... I, I don't know, uh, uh, Dante or, or Milton or... Sh no, I won't say Shakespeare. He's one of a kind. Ah, uh, that but, guy. Uh, or, or, or a famous Chinese poet, you know, like Lu Shun in, in he's China. Not a poem. I know he's not a poet, but a novelist of his caliber. He's too sharp. <laughs> too sharp. So I mean, yeah. what's the condition? How how does it how does it happen? In your opinion, I mean, it seems you think we're numb. How do you not become numb? Something horrible happened to us. God. So you're in the camp where we, there's nothing about us that a good comet striking into our planet, sweet comet of death, wouldn't yes. solve. People how to face something, you know, horrible. Uh, so, and, so you're uh, thinking that we we're just. I mean, that, that to me is is plausible. Like we're we're defined by our unwillingness to face uh, harsh realities. I mean, and this is a this is something that has gone back to at least respected philosophers was... like Nietzsche. You know, and it was the same idea. Heidegger with his being towards death and all of that stuff. And all these we... novelists, you know, name anyone who doesn't have this horrible experience. Everyone yeah. does, you know. Like, yeah, most of them had parents who died very young and brothers. This and is a personal siblings. life, also that, you know, the age. The age, horrible age. Horrible age, yeah, like plagues like, and stuff. And if you, you talk about Kunra, he, he has his, like, political life. You so, know, it, I mean. it's interesting to consider the implications of this, because the implications... I'm not saying it entails it, but it implies that, on the one hand, as we become more comfortable, which is a part of distancing ourselves from nature, we are also distancing ourselves from the, the, the traumatic realities that inspire us to make great art or at least great poetry, right? So when you, on the one hand, when we, when we develop ourselves to the point where we can all feel somewhat comfortable having YouTube and internet and TV and antibiotics and modern surgical techniques and all of that, the pill for pregnancy, whatever, you know, like we, we got we, we've got as much of nature under control both in ourselves and in the world as we've ever had before but at the same time that entails a, that, that implies a distancing from the profundities from what, what used to be called the eternities and immensities I don't know is, is that the idea and so what a catastrophe of some form would do would be to face us with those things again unavoidably yeah so a person like hegel sitting in his 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 office in wherever the hell he was uh for his final teaching gig in munich or gottingen or whatever he is in town teaching in his ivory tower being worshipped by all of his students but then all of a sudden typhus comes into town and everybody starts dying from typhus and he, even someone like him, who lived in nothing but his thoughts, couldn't get away from it. Harsh, harsh, 
mm. harshness mm. in nature, right? Mm. So what does poetry do? See, I'm thinking this. One could argue that poetry was a way of um, making nature beautiful and making things beautiful before we had the technological means to insulate ourselves from it mm. and actually live in a, in a sort of virtual world. Mm. So like, you could argue that like poetry and things like that before they were the kind of video games of, of the past, right? They were the ways that we covered things over and put a veil over them. Um, beautification, cosmetology, ancient and medieval cosmetology. But today, we can actually technologically and whatever control and manipulate and distance enough to where we just don't need it anymore. I mean, in that fundamental sense, we don't need it anymore. Uh, we, we, look, I'm not saying we don't need it anymore. What I'm saying is we feel we don't need it anymore to the point where the impulse in us, the poetic impulse, softens and numbs, like you said. Yes. What do you think? I think you are right. You know. Like, I mean, I'm just going off of, I'm riffing off of what you said. People create these things when they need. Yeah, You're when right. they need. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So maybe we don't need it. Maybe we need numbness. There's a word called numbness, right? Maybe numbness is what we chose. To make us more comfortable. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Like the more you realize And you know like this is what Brave New World the and close those... the closer you get to the truth, maybe I don't know what truth really means. Uh -huh. I'm just uh, you know sure. trying, trying to put a concept here. Of course, of course. Like maybe you are suffering more, you know, you realize you shouldn't be sharp too much. Yeah. Maybe you should be modest. Yep. That's Leo Party. Mellow always time. You know, like yeah. we say. Yeah, that uh, but I don't feel it's a pity, you know, like we still have great literature and poetry mm -hmm. we can read from the ancient time, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. it's enough. You, so you think it's enough to pretty much just sustain us forever? Basically being antiquarian scholars. Yes, yes. It may have been an ironic reason why one of the great philosophers of the modern age insisted and that also, he wasn't a philosopher, he said he was a scholar, mm -hmm. you know. And the most yeah. important thing is, in your life, you can find a person you can talk with. Mm -hmm. Like, you get on, on the same page, uh, interested in the same thing, you know, you can talk about it. It's not like uh, when you talk about literature or poetry with a person, and this person told you, why well, you have to talk about this? Mm -hmm. mm, I, have, I know nothing about it, don't waste my time or anything, you know, it's... Okay. Then I'm gonna be suffering. Sure. To me. Sure. So... I'm lucky, you know, like how you can talk with. I guess that's the thing about friends that we were talking about in this earlier in the last video. Yes. You know, you're, you're... What's a real friend is. <laughs> you know what Aristotle said a real friend is? The real friend is? Do you remember? A friend you need is a friend you need. That one not he said, right? He said a friend, a good friend is a mirror. Basically, yeah, another myself. Mm. You can see yourself. Yeah, basically, you inspire each other in a kind of, uh, maybe competition is the wrong word, but it's close. But you inspire each other to keep bettering yourself, you know? Like, I see, like, a, a, a very mundane example is, like, I see a friend of mine excelling in some video game and doing something that I haven't done yet or didn't think I could do. He inspires me to go and try and and to, to take that chance. So this is the final boss uh, finally to, to come back to this game we've been ignoring for two hours. Mommy. Uh, no, this is um what the hell is her name? Oh the two girls is mommy. Mommy and Hasabe, yeah. That is one annoying ass boss fight. Uh, to me, it was the most frustrating boss fight in the game, even even more than the third one, because I at least understood how to uh, how to beat the third boss. It was just hard to do, but with with Hasabe and Mommy, which you'll see in a minute, the final stage of that boss battle is you have to you have to hit this ghost that's coming out of one of their bodies, 
and uh, like usual the hitbox is very precise with that ghost so i tried to do it and i could never hit it so i just assumed that that's not what you were supposed to do and consequently i just didn't know what to do so i had to look it up on the internet i, I didn't know how to beat him couldn't figure it out and it turns out you did have to hit the ghost i just wasn't hitting it yeah, Sabuko is one blocking little bitch. Very lucky to hit her with that move. But I actually think you probably did better on Sabuko than I did. If I'm not mistaken. I really hear that and smack. Right? Yeah, he's awful. The 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 enemies, the Yakuza enemies in this part of the game are pretty rough. They can have this fire stuff. The fire is terrible and the, the girls do who they, throw things at you. Do you call it you. ant -Man? Because they look ant to me. They do look like ant actually. They have their stuff from their wooden call. I am the walrus. <laughs> <laughs> I am the walrus. The things from their head. Yeah, ant, uh, ant like antenna, oh. basically. Yeah. I don't know what they're technically called, but... It's something to feel the word, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, feelers. <laughs> sure, like on like Feeler. on our old, like on our old TVs, right? Yes, I know how they call it in Chinese. I don't know how they yeah, call it in English. What do they call them in Chinese? <laughs> what a beautiful word. Chu <laughs> <laughs> is like touch, right? Uh-huh. Jiao means fit. Touch feet. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's like two feet. You can touch things. Oh, they're, they're feet that touch things. No, I'm oh, sorry. It's the same pronunciation. It's not really feet. It's uh, it's things you grow from your head. So you're saying you don't even know your own language? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. I don't know my language either. Remember, I got hung up on sung and saying. Okay. I don't know what the fucking participle is. I don't even know what a participle. <laughs> participle. Participle. Do you know what that means? Please don't explain it. Okay, just very short. Okay. Change. Uh, make a verb to adjunctive. It's an adjective. Adjective. Adjunctive. <laughs> adjective. It sounds like you're combining adjective and conjunction. Yeah. But that's okay, that's okay. We're all imperfect creatures. We're all sinners. Yeah, well, anyway, should we all be better next time? God will forgive you. Huh? I hope I can be better next time. God forgives, but I don't. So, yeah. <laughs> but still, I don't want to learn English from you. You are too nasty when you teach. I am a very impatient teacher of English, and that is why I don't teach it. Yes. Um, I and sometimes I think you want to cut my tongue out, off, like if I couldn't pronounce right. I give you about five chances, and then when you can't get it anymore, I just say, whatever, I can understand you. <laughs> <laughs> just let it go. Because I don't know how to do it. Like, there are methods for teaching people how to pronounce things. You That's know, there, why there I don't are. want to learn English from you. Well, I don't know the methods. I don't know why you would want But to think learn. about it when I teach you Chinese. Mm -hmm. How patient I Admi am. Admittedly, though, we don't stress out over tones when you teach me Chinese. And imagine if you were focusing on me getting my tones, like, absolutely right. Like, that's how frustrating it would be. And you know... But I am I a good teacher? Sure you are. But, I mean, you're not, like, if I was doing the third tone, like, trying to do that, it's a joke. Say it. Say something in the third tone. Let me imitate it. Hushway. Yes, pretty good. Pretty good? Oh. Are you just being nice? Pretty good. I really think I really don't think you have problem. But it seems like that, you know, no, long sentence. Because when when you say wa, I, I can't do that. Wa. Wa. You don't wa. You don't have to have this uh. But you do it. Wa. Yeah, see, wa. It's, it's hard, man. Same, I, same. It's I same. just say, whoa. See? <laughs> whoa. Whoa, I need. That's it. Whoa. I don't even use tones. I just think it's a long sentence. You made it so funny. What's that? 
，小别胜新婚。<笑><笑> yeah. Well, um, I have I have my moments. Defeated by a pair of schoolgirls. You want to tell people what that means in English? Yeah,、uh, no, you tell them. Um, you tell them because I don't remember. Distance.、Mm. Make heart grow fonder. Yeah, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Oh yeah. You may have mystical tattoo. I can say, Nisha Dayama. <laughs> Huh? Oh, Nisha Dayem. Pretty good. Pretty good. I don't even use tones. There's no tones in that. My brother's probably listening to this cringing. Come on, no tones. Nisha Dayem. Yeah, Nisha Dayem. Nisha Dayem. Pretty good. I really think it's pretty. That's what they're gonna say to this to Sabuko now. Nisha Dayem. They're gonna say that to. What does that mean, by the way? Tell our tell our listeners what that means. Are you, are you my master? Something. It's sarcastically asking,、oh. "Are you my master?" So when when somebody's like bossing you around or says, "Go get this," you would say, "Nisha Dayama."、Like, oh. who, who the fuck do you think you are?、Oh, yes. Basically,、oh. you know. But what's the longer way to say that? You said you told me a longer way at first that I had trouble remembering. You 认为你自己是大爷吗 ？Yeah, that that's the one. You really just 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 大爷吗 ？Because I put myself yourself something like that. You don't really have to say it. That's what they should say to Ricky and Kunio right now. But they're gonna say it to Hasabe and Mommy. See, I mean, how could anybody argue that this was a Was a not a good ending. No, I mean an annoying like、uh, girl power game. They did kind of advertise it that way, which was a mistake. But I mean, when your two main characters are basically just nutty stalkers, like come Look, on. Misako is sleeping, so that's all come from her dream. It's really funny, but you—that's you. See, she's sleeping. Oh, I sleeping all the time. Yeah, and that's me on my phone watching YouTube videos. Yes, I'm a gender bender. And also, you have blonde hair. I like, I like.、Uh, well, she has red hair, I think. Yeah, different color, but I always have blonde hair.、So. I love that. That that is absolutely you sleeping right there. And short hair, like her.、Mm. But see, I don't identify with any of the guys. I don't think I'm like Ricky and Kunia, like either of them. The way that they talk, you know, like let's go see what Hasabe and Mommy are up to. <laughs> no, I don't really like them too. And I, I guess that's why a lot of fans of the series got pissed off because it did make Ricky and Kunia seem a bit、um, callow. <laughs> and uh, uh, they are the heroes of the series. You know, this is a big series of games, and at least I guess Kunia. The, the series is named after him. I think. Really? Yeah, Kunio Kun. I think that's the Japanese name of the series. So he's like the main character. I, I think this is coming from a place where I just hearsay. I've heard people say this. I don't know for a fact. But in English, it's like River City, something. I mean, that's the series name. But in, in, in Japanese, it's Kunio Kun, which Kun is just like a diminutive in Japanese. I think. Like you're a Japanese expert. No, I'm not. I know barely anything. Better than me. But I, I have watched a lot of Japanese movies, and I know they always say "kun." What?、Um, We watch a lot of Japanese drama too. Yeah. Made by Chinese. Made by Chinese. Hmm. The boys are back. The boys are back in town. I don't know why I don't like Ricky. I was playing with Ricky. Ricky, you remember? No, you played with Kunio. I played with Ricky. Hey, they work so slowly. But man, Kunio has the most beastly move in the game. That fire, that fire move, absolutely beastly. Okay, so here are the secret bosses, and、um, of course, it's these two bitches, and we. Are just gonna use the tank pin on them and beat them very quickly, because we just wanted to show you this. So if our levels are different and whatever, that's the reason we're just playing from a different save file. I didn't want to go through the game and get all the statues again, or the statues that I missed. So yeah, lazy. Fuck it. <laughs> just play. Just play with this. 
only kick her through the window. I'm very confused right now. What are you talking about? But see, about? you did play with me. I don't speak nerd. Yes, I totally remember. I don't care if this makes no sense. But I, I want you, you the, the viewers, to watch how fast they go down with the tank pit. I have to equip it first. And if you don't equip the bunny with it, then uh, you'll you'll move very slow. So get it equipped. Tank. Bunny. Death. Look at that. <laughs> it's insane. Like you, you just like I said, you just become god mode with that thing. It, it is complete, oh, completely OP all the way. Okay, and they jump around and then they go on their little stupid ball. It's it's really not an easy fight to be to be perfectly honest. It's uh, it drove me fucking crazy the first time I did it. But your mileage may vary. Okay, heart attack on a rolling her girlfriend into into a ball with exploding hearts everywhere representing their love for Kunio and Ricky in this profoundly poetic game hard to dodge ooh she nailed me bitch biatch <laughs> All right, now it's ghost time. Now it's trying to beat him too. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't have enough to get you the tank pin. Well, we did actually. We didn't have enough. You to have get to you be both. a ghost. Yeah, you have to hit the fucking ghost. It's awful. Look Before you don't know that. It's so hard to hit. Good thing I saved you, man. I didn't want you to lose that money. There we go. One hit KO. KO. Oh, poop. We'll never live so that's the end of the game. Officially. No mm -hmm. What do you have to say you in conclusion before we bounce up out of this piece? I say I feel. I'm proud of myself. Mmm, proud of yourself. Mm. Also, I hope you guys can enjoy the videos. Right. And do you rec recommend uh, River City Girls to them? To play? To anybody? Mm. It's a really good game. Fun to co-op? Mm. If you have a friend or you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, you can play with them. It's really a good game. And you guys gonna get a lot of fun from it. And are you gonna come back and comment some more on some other co-op videos with me? Yes! If you are like me, I will come back. So be sure to like her. <laughs> if you don't like her, then I won't come back. Yeah, and don't be mean, please. I don't want to make people unbearable. Yeah, man, she just she just trying to give you guys some levity and be a cool, cool partner for me. So welcome her with open arms. She deserves it. <laughs> she was a real soldier with this game and doing this commentary. Four hours of commentary, man. That's a lot. A lot. And she never done this before. Mm. Yeah, it's your first time. Yes. And you were a little nervous, right? In the beginning. It's kind of weird to talk into a, a microphone. And, but when time goes on, I feel okay. Yeah, you just have to kind of not care, man. You just got to talk about whatever pops into your head. And damn the torpedoes. I just hope I can talk more better. Much better. My English, you know. Oh, that's fine. And only a dick would criticize you for that. Not a big deal. So, uh, we're probably going to leave it there and just let you guys see the comment. Uh, sorry, the comments. The, uh, the credits. And um, we'll see you next time. Next time we do some co-op. Signing mm. off, mm. Leon, Ada, Sayonara. Zaijian. Zaijian. Zaijian, friends. See ya.
my boo on a nice romantic date And I went to pay the check And she cracked my skull with a pasta plate Bye.